What's going on, man? Thank you, the Boiler Man here. Guys, we're here in Ridgewood, Queens, New York. That's right, we're doing a gas steam boiler installation. As you guys can already see, we already ripped her out. So, we're already getting started. We started off today very early. Rise and grind, baby. But, guys, most importantly, we have to change this boiler because it's gonna get a bit colder. It's cold already, and it's only gonna get super cold. So, guys, I wanna show you why he had to change this boiler. Well, it's obvious he had a, a leak, but I wanna show you how bad it was. So guys, check that out. I mean, just wanna tell you guys to do your maintenance. Look how big this hole is. This was on top of his boiler, he didn't realize it. So it was actually starting to corrode his actual flue pipe. So his flue pipe is his first sign of corrosion. So when he called me, he's like, Louie, I'm losing water, I'm losing steam pressure, some of them not getting enough pressure, or just getting lukewarm and not getting warm. And as soon as I saw the flue pipe and I see all the rust on it, aha, it gave me a hint. And sure enough, my hunch was right. I thought, listen, you have a leak, you have a cracked boiler somewhere, and probably it's on top. Because it's above the water line, so he wasn't able to notice it or see it. So you guys, this is what I mean. So what I did, what I did was just flood the boiler, and when I flooded the boiler, sure enough, it started leaking. You can see all the water coming out. But you can see all this mud. Look at this mud over here, guys. And this mud is a scale buildup inside the boiler. But most importantly, they didn't do their preventive maintenance. They didn't do their due diligence. So this is what I tell you guys. Guys, it's super, super important. Unless you want to be paying me or any other boiler guy or plumber, you know, a few grand a year. Listen, I'm okay with it. But the point being is, you don't want to do that. So guys, do your due diligence, do your preventive maintenance, because this is the mud that stays inside here. What happens, it's not enough heat transfer. The overheating the block, it gets super, super hot, and one, and one day it's just gonna crack. And that's exactly what happened. But in this case, it's a little bit different because it corroded. But my point being is, you do not want to get to this very big expense. So do your preventive maintenance, do your due diligence. With that being said, guys, is I hope you enjoyed the video. Watch the process of what it is to install a gas steam boiler. If you have any questions, by all means, you can reach out to Louis the Boiler Man either by DM, mail, you can call me, or most importantly, go to our YouTube channel. Subscribe, 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 and leave me a message on the on the bottom. I'd love to hear from you guys. Guys, just another day with Louis the Boiler Man. Ooh wee! Weppa. All right, guys, you guys can see um, the boiler. So right now we're ready to get, we're about to get ready to start doing the piping, um, the steam header. So first thing is first, guys, always read the instructions. So as per the instructions, it's stating that we need to get uh, a riser, both risers, we're gonna use both of them in this case, and we're gonna manifold together. So you see the nipple right now um, on the left-hand side, there's one nipple. On the left, one on the right, we're gonna take that out. We're gonna take that one nipple and we're gonna put it with an 18 inch, as well as another 18 inch nipple on top of the boiler. Once you put the two 18 inch nipples, we're gonna put it in two elbows, we're gonna face it towards the exhaust piping, and we're gonna manifold them together. But we're gonna manifold them together, and then we're gonna put a T. The T is gonna go to your riser. In this case, you're gonna go to your home or your building, wherever the steam is going, your supply. If you have any problems, please, by all means, if you have any problems because you're not understanding what the uh, instruction is telling you, no. There's no reason for you to reach out to Louis the Borderman. You can always reach out to Louis the Borderman at 516-377-5200. If you have any questions, or you can always email us or DM us. We're more than happy to help you guys. Wepa.
All right, guys. So right now, you guys can see we're at the end of the installation. Right now, we're doing the wiring. First thing is first, we're gonna do the high voltage wiring. It's already pre-wired from the factory on the low voltage. So what we gotta do is run high voltage. With high voltage, when we say high voltage in our industry, on a residential, is 120 volts. So it's 120 volts. You got a neutral. You got the black wire, which is the hot wire, and the green wire, which is your ground wire. Once you get the high voltage done, then the low, the last thing you need to do with the low voltage is actually connect the thermostat, which is right here. So these right here goes right to you directly to your thermostat. So guys, stay tuned because we're almost done. We're almost there. Weba. Let me hit the Louis the Bullman here, guys. We just finished wrapping up installing this gas steam boiler. As you guys can see, she's a beauty. It's a New Yorker. It's a beautiful boiler. It's working. And most importantly, it's giving out heat. I think it's the perfect time of the year. We need this heat as winter time. So it's winter right now. So we definitely need some heat. So the next step is we just have to turn it on. We just turned it on momentarily. So I have to push out some steam. So we give it about maybe about 15, 20 minutes. It shouldn't take that long. Once we start pushing some steam, then we're gonna go to every single radiator in the home and check if they're all working. However, if they're not working, then we gotta check furthermore. Meaning we're gonna check the air vents, the vent risers, like they have, uh, they have um, vents on the actual riser itself. That's usually the tail end of the risers. And you also wanna check your return. Guys, a lot of times people don't realize that those return lines been there for many years and they're clogged. And what happens, they get clogged with sediment. It does not make it does not make the cycle, it doesn't create the cycle. So it takes longer to make heat or make steam. And you're gonna get some knocking, some banging, you get surging as far as your, um, your, your water is concerned. So we don't want that. And also what happens is you think you're low in water and all of a sudden you get a gush of water come back when it finally settles, then it's gonna flood the border. So you don't wanna have any issues with flooding the border. So guys, these are things you wanna check, not just the border. The border is just the heart of the system. Now we gotta check the tentacles, right? The arm and the legs. So guys, if you have any questions, please by all means, DM me, email me. You can always call me with the water, man. Where? 516-377-5200. With that being said, guys, Listen, I will tell you guys, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We'd love to hear from you guys. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Support it with the Borderman. Weba.